Hi everyone, I'm Francis, and I'm thrilled to be bringing you the first of two videos on Pierre Esprit de Radisson. Uh, chances are you already recognize that name from the chain of hotels, but Radisson is also known for his exploits with his brother-in-law, Des Grosseillers, who have since been portrayed through comics and TV as kind of the quintessential examples of the coureurs de bois, or fur traders. There's a lot about Radisson's life that remains somewhat of a mystery. What we do know is that he was most likely born in France around 1640, possibly as early as 1636, and came to New France with his family in 1651. A year later, in 1652, he was captured by a group of Mohawk near Trois-Rivières while out hunting with some companions. What's remarkable about this, and part of what makes Radisson such a fascinating figure, is that his life was spared, and he was fully adopted by a Mohawk family in order to replace or requicken a son of theirs who had died. This allowed Radisson to learn their language and become very familiar with their customs before escaping the next year. Fortunately, Radisson was not put off by this first unintentional voyage into territory that was, up until this point, mostly unexplored by Europeans. From his teens until his late 20s, Radisson embarked on three more voyages, which he would later recount in writing during a stay in Great Britain. The second voyage took him along the St. Lawrence to the central nation of the Iroquois, the Onondaga. The third voyage around Lake Michigan, and the fourth around Lake Superior, and possibly all the way up to James Bay. I should point out that Radisson himself is doubtful to have made the leg of the trip up to James Bay, or all the way around Lake Michigan, but De Grossier most likely did. Upon returning to New France, Radisson would play an integral role in the founding of the Hudson's Bay Company, but those first four voyages reflect his anthropological eye for the indigenous people who already inhabited what would become central Canada and the northeastern United States. Nothing is more indicative of Radisson's qualifications for this than his ear for languages. He was able to list, at the end of his four voyages, over 70 nations or groups of native peoples that he had been amongst, and it is not unlikely that most of them, regardless of belonging to the same language group, could have spoken a slightly different dialect. Before being captured, Radisson had already learned some of the Huron language, which itself belongs to the Iroquoian language family, and would have learned Mohawk while amongst his adoptive family. During that time, he also proved himself capable of communicating in Algonquin, which is not surprising considering the proximity of the Montagnier to the French colonies. While, for the most part, his voyages took him through territories inhabited by speakers of Algonquin languages, Radisson showed an aptitude for recalling words in the diverse languages and dialects he discovered, and during his fourth voyage was able to learn over the winter a great deal of the Eastern Dakota Sioux dialect, which is part of a separate family altogether, Siouan. Radisson's talent for language was what allowed him to recount his voyages in English not five years after beginning to learn it, and is just the beginning of what made him such a crucial asset to both the French and the English throughout his life.